Hey guys, real quick, I wanted to give you a heads up before the video starts that I just found out from a subscriber that a fellow detailer out in England, his name is Nick Reed NT Detailing. Unfortunately, his shop burned down to the ground, so he's got no products, no tools, no lifts, no building and obviously it's putting his livelihood in jeopardy. So as a detailing community, uh, someone put together a GoFundMe page. I'll put the link down below. If there's anything you can do to support him and help him get back on his feet, it would be absolutely amazing. As always, guys, I appreciate your support and I hope you enjoy this episode. So today we're working on a Porsche 965. Of course, I'm talking about the turbo, the wide body, super iconic Porsche, but we do have an issue. This has incredibly delicate and ridiculously thin paint. So what do you do in a situation like that? Find out today on this episode of Drive and Protect. The Porsche 964 is the internal name given to the 911 produced between 1989 and 1994. This is a 1991 964 Turbo, sometimes referred to right or wrong as the 965. So let the comments begin, but whatever you want to call it, it has a 3.3 liter engine from its predecessor, the 930 Turbo, but with a few tweaks to make it a little bit smoother with less turbo lag because Porsche simply didn't have enough time to perfect the 3.6 liter M64 engine at the time, which is the same one originally in my 1991 964 C for until I upgraded the P's and C's to a 3.8 liter for the track. Now watch until the end of the video for a comparison of the turbo with my ammo 964 from the same exact year. Each has its own modifications, but each ironically have the same horsepower on paper. But before we go for a drive, we have a ton of work to do on razor thin paint. As you can see, the new owner drives the heck out of his dream car, but the shark fin clear bra from the early 90s is way past its prime and just a nightmare to remove. So I called in my buddy Dan for some help as this is gonna be a project for sure. First, we lifted the car and removed the cup ones and the five millimeter spacers. Remember to replace the nuts to avoid removing the original grease on the threads, but it's not the end of the world if you forget. With the wheels off and to the side for cleaning later, you can see that the calipers haven't been thoroughly cleaned in quite some time. So we turned on the Ammo Edition 630 Power Washer. Again, I'll put a link in the description for more info. Then added Brute Wheel Soap to a bucket and filled three quarters with water. Now, because the calipers were pretty bad, we skipped the pre-rinse process to avoid diluting plum wheel cleaner for some extra kick. Also works great on suspension and wheel wells too. The brush being used is a two-tier custom wheel brush designed to access the seams and the sharp contours commonly found on calipers and suspensions and rims, etc. After the initial scrubbing, then we sprayed brute wheel soap to clean the larger areas with a dual density scrub brush. For stubborn gunk or super tight areas, it's always nice to have an old toothbrush for more precise agitation. Next up, Dan filled the foamer with Brute and Boost Anti-Salt and soaked the undercarriage and gave it a few minutes to let the chemicals do their work before scrubbing with various brushes. Next, we focused on the wheels with a green scrub pad because the barrels were just covered in some sort of weird brown grease. Then we used plum and a scrub brush for everywhere else that had normal brake dust, etc. But I do want to give a big shout out to Dan for helping me out on this project as I had actually hurt my back the previous week and hadn't been able to move as smoothly as I wanted to. 
With that being said, luckily enough, a longtime friend of mine also happens to be a high-level strength and wellness coach. His name is Colin Campbell. You've seen him before on podcasts, etc. Anyhow, he's been working upstairs with me in the studio gym to get through the lower back issue. I can say from personal experience and doing this for a very long time, this is a vivid reminder of how important it is to take care of your body in our professional setting, meaning as a detailer. I'll have more info and a step-by-step -step guide for detailers with Colin coming up later, and we're gonna feature him in the new ATA 400 Pro Series coming pretty soon, so stay tuned. For the wash, a squirt bottle of water mixed with Brut and Boost is prepared with a brush for the seams of the car while I wash the larger areas with the new blue wash microfiber towel. With the paint now washed, rinsed, dried, and blowed out, it's now time to measure the paint and compare it to the inner door jams. Okay, now that we've cleaned and dried the paint, this is where it sort of gets interesting from a detailing perspective. As I mentioned earlier, there's not a whole lot of paint. We measured inside the door jam. That measures around a little bit over three mil, and then the paint is on the upper end of three and maybe a little lower end of four. So we're, we're talking like maybe one mil of paint over the uh, door jam. This is a big problem, why? Because we don't have a lot of paint to work with. So the dilemma here is setting expectations for the customer. Why? Because this paint is not gonna look perfect. Let's say like the 599 behind us, there's a whole lot of paint there. This doesn't have a lot of paint. So what that means is when I'm polishing the paint, Dan's polishing the paint, we can't take off too much. So if that scratch is very deep, we're not gonna be able to get underneath it because there's nothing underneath it for, for us to take out. You're, you're gonna have metal. You're gonna expose the metal. You're gonna burn through the paint. All these horrible things as a detailer. So what we're gonna end up doing is probably a one step on this and just giving this as much life as it possibly can without having the customer repaint it. So that kind of concept, the larger or the broader 10,000 foot view is make sure your customer understands when you run into this one, there's just no paint. Look, 3.98. There's nothing there. So the moral of the story is you have to speak to your customer and set expectations because this is not gonna be perfect. The ethical or the moral, whatever you wanna call it from a detailing mindset is we're gonna make this good, but let this live to fight another day. While I was testing the paint to come up with a game plan, Dan began the nightmare of removing the old and cracked clear bra from the early 90s by removing the plastic shark fin in front of the rear wheel for easier access to the bra. Yeah. I cannot stress this enough. This is extremely tedious and prone Ow. to removing bits My of paint hurt. while you're doing this. No one wins in this scenario, but since the customer started the project on his own prior to coming to the studio, it's time to sort of metaphorically rip off the rest of the Band-Aid. And to do this, you're gonna need boiling hot water, a plastic razor blade, and an insane amount of patience. Seriously, the trick here is just to remove the top layer with the razor blade, which was gonna leave behind this glue. Then you're gonna use a chemical to remove the glue. Obviously, it's gonna be solvent-based. In this case, we're using rapid remover. That's a great choice. But this concept of removing the top layer and then removing the glue, that's the key to success here. 
Likewise, depending on the integrity of the paint, you can also use a rubber wheel on a power tool that is designed to gently remove adhesives and stickers, that sort of thing, without damaging the paint. But beware, this will burn through the paint if used improperly. There you go. Not really. Before polishing, we added tape to the rubber and the cloth sunroof seals. Now on older Porsches, rubber just absorbs the polish, turns white, we've seen it everywhere. Really difficult to remove. So taping now is honestly, it's just faster than cleaning later. Okay, I'm behind the camera right now. As you can see, this is the badge and one of the pins came off. Now that's pretty common on an older car, so we're gonna get him a new badge. But right now we have to figure out how to take that other pin off. So if you look, we put a bunch of tape around this whole thing, and now we have to get that pin, which is the other side, so it's this side that's missing. We have to take this off so that we can get this badge back on, a new badge back on. Okay, now with everything set up for step number one on the paint, we're using a yellow pad, yellow polish. I prefer to use the six inch, Dan prefers to use the five inch. As you can see, the before and after is substantial with just one step, so we can leave as much paint on the car as possible. Take a look here, this is a scratch. Now it was very deep before I started polishing and now it's much better, but obviously it's not gone. This is when your mind needs to tell yourself, hey, I need to stop and not dig for it. It's way too deep. And knowing when to say when is not defeat. It's a prudent business or professional strategy. Ego and desire for perfection in this case is actually foolish and not in the customer's or the car's best interest. After a few hours of working on razor thin paint, I wanted to switch gears, so I coated the wheels in gelée and repeated the process on the calipers as well. On a side note, be sure to remove any stickers before applying gelée with a plastic razor blade and some solvent. Obviously, gelée is not gonna stick to old ratty stickers like this. If you really wanna go crazy, you can also polish with a one inch polisher or by hand to bring back some depth to your painted calipers before applying gelée wheel coating. They'll look a thousand times better. This coating in particular has a higher heat resistant characteristic and will make cleaning them easier in the future. With gelée curing, I wanted to focus on the interior. Now you can see that there's mold growing on the backside of the frunk carpet, frame, and plastics. Even the fuse box cover had mold on it as well, so there's some sort of water leak somewhere. I had never seen that before in my life working on all these Porsches, so I removed everything I could and started the cleaning process with lather and a brush. With everything now clean and the mold removed, I sprayed Restore, which is an EPA approved disinfectant. I let it sit wet for about two minutes per the instructions and then wipe it dry. For more information on Restore, check out the how-to video on my website, ammonyc.com, to learn more about disinfecting, sanitizing, and deodorizing your car interior without bleach or alcohol staining your cockpit. 
I repeated the same steps on the carpet, but with shag and a brush first, then agitated the fibers with the carpet scrubber for easier vacuuming, and then used the steamer last. Looks pretty good. With the tape now removed, it was time for touch-up with a syringe and a 90-degree tip to cover up the areas exposed from the old clear bra removal. As day has now turned into night after 14 hours, Dan replaced the shark fin plastic while I reinstalled the spare tire, which by the way is actually part of the front crash support. So a few years ago when I wanted to remove it on the track as part of my weight reduction, an older gentleman came by and told me that this is actually gonna jeopardize your safety in the event of a front end collision, God forbid. So I never forgot that. Anyhow, I put the carpet in, then Dan and I reinstalled the clean wheels as I began to lose my mind from the lack of food. No. What? Okay, okay, never mind. Never mind. Everything's alright. Everybody breathe. Breath. Everything will be okay. Can't look at the scar. Anymore. No. Stop. The spacer. Space fur! I need the spacer! <laughs> With mud on the tires and Frame Pro on the trim, she started to come alive. So we added Reflex Pro to the paint before we went home for the night. After installing Reflex Pro, about 30 seconds to a minute later, you're gonna see rainbows as you see right here. This indicates it's now time to be removed. Look at you. Look at you. Bright and early the next morning after some food and some well-deserved sleep, I quickly cleaned the interior. Okay, our last step on the Porsche is to work the interior. Now, the first thing right off the bat, as you can see, it's really not that dirty. Now, the second thing that's more important is when you get into an older car like this, you can just smell that a Porsche is a Porsche. I know I have the 964 back there. When I get in, you just feel like you just put on like an amazing suit. And I don't want to mess with that. I don't want to put a little tree here or put some Febreze in there. You want to keep it smelling old. Now that kind of harkens back to a detailing thing that I learned from Kevin years ago. Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. You want to just do what needs to be done and no more. You want to let this live as many lives as possible, not just walk in there and drop an atom bomb and clean all these things and rip everything off and just overcomplicate things. This is a perfect example. We're going to use a little bit of lather here because there's hand oils, a little bit here, a little bit on the side. That's it. And when I'm done, it's going to look great. It's going to smell fresh, meaning just like an old Porsche, exactly what you want. And then we're going to go take this thing for a ride. For the quick wipe down, I'm using lather, a microfiber towel, and when needed, an interior brush. Now this is pretty cool, check this out. For the vents, I've developed a mini woolly with the folks from Braun Brush for the interior vents, calipers, and of course the rims. Now obviously you wanna keep each of these separate to avoid cross-contamination, but they are incredibly helpful. They last pretty much forever, and it's the first one ever in this super tiny size.
Anyhow, I'm super excited about the latest ammo innovation, but I'll have more information on my website soon. These things are awesome. Afterwards, I used compressed air where I could and then wiped down everything lightly with lather, and that's it. Gotta clean up a little bit more aggressively. To moisturize it, all I did was the driver's side seat bolster as this had taken more abuse than anywhere else in the car for very obvious reasons, getting in, getting out, that sort of thing. Once applied, I let it sit for about two minutes and then removed it, returning it to a matte finish so it matches the rest of the car's seat. Then I vacuumed, especially after using compressed air. If you do that first, it's gonna blow up all kinds of stuff. So if you vacuum first and then use compressed air, you're just gonna have to go back and do it again. With the floor mats out, I vacuumed and then steamed the front two mats. I did the same thing on the driver's side carpets, the ones I couldn't remove, and then I worked on the pedals with lather and a screwdriver for that one little tiny rock. Finally, I put stripes in the carpets and the door cards and she was looking fantastic, but I did have one last thing to do, of course, with permission from the owner. Once I was outside, the paint looked absolutely amazing, but I could feel my 964 sitting right there getting a little bit jealous. So I think we're gonna have to take it out and stretch her legs for a bit too. slow now you feel a kick in you're like okay here we go man it really goes from just docile just uh, if I had my cigar just having a good time to like oh my god we're late for something we're on a racetrack etc we're at 3,000 the back pressure so this gentleman has no cats <laughs> and wide open exhaust. Man, it gets up there fast. All in all, this thing looks good, drives great, and sounds superb. Okay, now we are in the ammo 964. Woo! Listen to that. Yeah. All right, so right off the bat, the big difference is now we're driving a 3.8 liter naturally aspirated versus the 3.3 turbo. Awesome turbo, but huge difference between the two of them. This one is very linear. I mean, it just has a steady power all the way through versus sluggish, sluggish, sluggish. Oh my God, power, that kind of thing. Huge difference. Now, I have a ton of aftermarket things on this, as you can imagine. Crazy stiff. My clutch is incredibly hard compared to that one. So the bottom line is these are both ridiculous cars. 964 Turbo, 964 C4. Love them both. Daily driven car, I'd probably take the Turbo. It's much more benign, smooth, soft, nice comfy seats on the track or Weekend Warrior. Yeah. I take this one all day, baby. And I just washed it. 
So the rule is if it rains and you just wash it, you just gotta go faster so that the rain doesn't beat on it. Officer, and it's going fast because it's raining out and I didn't want it to get wet. As always, thanks for watching. And of course, please subscribe to support all content creators and we'll see you next week.